When people come to swim here, they feel as if it's, uh, they're here to swim, they get a swim, because sometimes when you go to the bigger leisure centres, it's full of music and hundreds of kids splashing about and they don't get a decent swim, or it's a funny shape. They, they like this because it's a, an old-fashioned pool. <laughs> I find it a fantastically beautiful building. It's very, very much of its time, but it's, it's so light and so airy, and especially compared to mon modern swimming pools, it's a very sort of, it's a standout building. I think there's a lot of um, meaning in these buildings. I think there's a lot of community attachment to these buildings. I think particularly in a building like the, the Renfrew Baths, the Victory Baths, with the very strong connection with the, the war effort. Um, but they've always been community hubs. They've always been a place that's a focus for the community. Two of my grandkids are in England with modern pills, and they love coming here because it's old. The technics magic because of the old lockers. You know, the old shower rooms, I think there's something magic about it. It's a real swimming pool where you can come and relax and have a good swim, have a blather. This was a really good base for swimming. It was very family orientated. It was a good place to, to swim. It was a nice, a nice place to swim as well, a nice atmosphere, always bright. If you speak to people in Renfrew, they'll talk about the bass being beautiful and this being their preferred place to go. And I can't argue with them with that because it's my favourite as well. I like it because it's the old style of Victorian yeah. baths. It's very yeah. traditional. Um, it's, it is the type of swimming bath that I learned to swim in as well. Mm. And I like the kind of the oldness of the changing areas around the side. I like the traditional part of it. I think it's a, it's a lovely building to have in the community. It's just a tradition of it. It's, it's just a great place to come along and play water pool. Of character, it's like coming home. Uh, people just love coming here. For 100 years, the Victory Baths have been at the centre of the Renfrew community. Olympic, Commonwealth, and national coaches and competitors have mastered their sport here, and countless young people have learned to swim under Thomas Abercrombie's unique glass canopy roof. In this film you'll hear why and how the Victory Baths came to be established and what they have meant to the people of Renfrew over the years. In 1918, the Carnegie Trust commissioned a study into the state of public baths provision across the UK. In her opening remarks, report author Agnes Campbell notes, the question of public baths and wash houses can be justly considered only in relation to the whole problem of how best to ensure conditions, which may make it possible for every member of the community to lead a self-respecting life. I once heard a minor remark. There's plenty of air and plenty of water, but they're both hard to come by. In such hardness lies the real sting of modern poverty. There's two main reasons for public baths really coming into being. There was a public health uh, issue. Uh, which related to mass migration of people into industrial centres in the 19th century. Um, there were cholera outbreaks in 1830s onwards throughout the 19th century, which really focused people's minds on the need to uh, improve public health for ordinary people. Uh, and uh, later on in the century, there was public health uh, legislation passed, which allowed local authorities and uh, public bodies to borrow money to allow them to construct swimming baths and uh, public baths, and it was a combination of both swimming and public baths. Um, public baths were available because many people didn't have an actual bath in their home. They were still bathing in front of the fire, effectively. Um, and public baths gave them an opportunity to go and get a, 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 a real bath in a, in, in, in a clean environment. The second reason was really the development of swimming, which really started in the second half of the 19th century, where competitive swimming became more formalised and the Scottish Amateur Swimming Association was created in 1888 uh, and after that folk were having swimming galas and swimming was becoming more available to a larger part of the population as they had more leisure time. So these buildings were built really to accommodate that uh, interest and that need as well. On Monday the 10th of November 1919, Provost Daniel Ferguson read a letter received from the borough's youngest freeman before a meeting of the Renfrew Town Council. Dear Provost Ferguson, My wife and I would like to present public baths to Renfrew as a memorial to those citizens of the Royal Borough who made the supreme sacrifice during the Great War. We should like it to house Renfrew's role of honour besides being of daily usefulness to all. 
If it meets with your acceptance, my wife and I will have very great pleasure in gifting this building to the town in the hope that it may benefit all men, women and children of the community. Fred Lobnitz. He was uh, the managing director of the Lobnitz shipyards who were primarily responsible for building uh, dredging ships for cleaning out sort of shipping canals and Lobnitz had pioneered the idea of using rock breakers as part of the dredger so the dredgers were able to dig out sort of channels through rocks which was sort of significant for the Panama Canal but also the Suez Canal and many other harbours around the world so they sort of they were the ships that kept shipping sort of going and then during the First World War Fred took responsibility for uh, munitions production in Scotland to basically make sure there was enough ammunition being built. As a consequence Fred was knighted to become Sir Frederick and he was also awarded the Legion of Honour by France. The Victory Baths opened on the 19th of September 1921. Built on the site chosen for its proximity to the town centre but also to Robertson Park where it was thought that bathers and swimmers may unwind. A ceremonial riband was cut by one Miss M. Cunningham, a well-known local swimmer. At, at that point in time, there was a lot of desire to memorialise the sort of sacrifice that had been made, and a lot of memorials were being built. And I think, if I interpret rightly, my, my uh, great-grandfather and great-grandmother had a more sort of progressive view that you're building a sort of by building the baths as a memorial then you're building something that future generations benefit from so it's not just a it's not just some statue in, in a square it's actually something that's sort of important to the community and has value to future generations and sort of adds to the community as a sort of as a sort of living memorial rather than something just to look at anxious to show their appreciation of our many kindnesses Provis Ferguson wrote to Lady Lopnitz on the 8th of July 1921 to express the unanimous will of the town council in offering this highest honour in our power to bestow, the freedom of the ancient and royal borough of Renfrew. Lady Lizzie accepted by letter dated 11th July. I have done so little to deserve that honour and feel I might not be a very good First Woman representative. Still, if you and the Renfrew Town Council wish to honour me, I accept with most grateful and heartfelt pleasure. I think that was incredibly important to her for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it was a very progressive thing because she was the first female Burgess, so it was a sign of changing times and the more important role that uh, women were having post First World War, where a lot of women had been working. So. I think it was a personal honour to her, but also pointed to a sort of brighter future for uh, women as well as they sort of become more and more important in the professional world. So when Lizzie was awarded the freedom of Renfrew, there was a sort of valedictory dinner and she gave a speech which was written down and recorded. So I have the copy of the speech just here. Um, and the bit that stuck out to me was that uh, where she says it is the earnest desire of my husband and myself that they may not only be an acquisition but a very great pleasure to both the young and older people of Renfrew and that sort of really speaks to their desire for it to sort of be part of the community I think. Sir Fred passed away in December 1932. Lady Lizzie Lobnitz in March 1947. They were laid to rest at Arkelson Cemetery, almost exactly halfway between the site of their shipyard and the family estate at Ross Hall. But what of their hopes for the Victory Baths? Fast forward 100 years, do they still fulfil Sir Fred and Lady Lizzie's vision? Let's meet some present day users to find out. It's important to learn to swim for a couple of reasons. For health benefits, I think, because you can swim until you're 80, 90, you can still come. And a lot of people still do at that age, still come here. Yeah. And obviously for safety. 
I started work at the Renfrew Baths when I was about 18. Over the years, the 40 years that I've worked at Renfrew Baths, I've probably taught half the population of Renfrew to swim. Um, I always get recognised in the street as my swimming teacher, which is quite nice. The kids love the bath, I think, because it's old, right? It's got a deep end, which makes them excited because when they're in this end at first, they're always saying, oh, the deep end, the deep end. So when they get to the deep end, the first couple of weeks are excited and then it just becomes normal for them. When I first started teaching swimming, I didn't have a qualification. I was just thrown in at the deep end, pardon the pun, and told to teach these kids to swim, and that's the way we did it way back 40 years ago. Carol and I have been friends ever since we started 35 years ago, and through that time, uh, my son has worked here, my daughter's worked here, my other son's worked here, my youngest son met his girlfriend here, and they got married eight weeks ago. I worked here, obviously, and so did my daughter, and over the years, I had a sister-in-law, a brother-in-law, nieces, nephews, son-in-law, all working here. So it got to become a bit of a joke when I was putting up an application forms. Is that another one of <laughs> your relatives? Yes. <laughs> the kids missed out during lockdown big time. And we're trying to catch up. There's a lot of kids at that age, when they start, maybe three, four, they're maybe not going to come now because they're not used to getting used to coming in the baths. They're trying to cram in as much into 12 weeks instead of having breaks to encourage them to swim. Previously there had been a club uh, called Renfrew Aqua, who were also a swimming club. Uh, the only thing that was left for them was the water polo. So there was not, not a good way of getting swimmers, competitive swimmers, within Renfrew. So there was a club that was run, but there was only a few swimmers in it. So the decision was to expand it. I was part of that club as a competitive swimmer. And when they expanded it, at that point, I'd decided I would take over as head coach because I wanted to see the club grow and have more younger swimmers just competing at a kind of higher level, if you like. When Alan left, I, I then took over as the, the coach of the club uh, and we, we became more competitive uh, and we were entering like competition and, uh, and a very, very... They're very successful as far as the level that we were at. Renfrew Baths does compete with uh, events created by Scottish Swimming. We've had very good success in the last few years. Uh, swimming at all levels and some swimmers going up to district level, uh, obtaining lots of personal bests at many events and a lot of medals as well. So I've been a very successful club. Well, I think like our sport's a great life skill to have in general, but. Um, Fitness-wise, I think you can come whether it's competitively or like just for leisure, and it keeps you fit and healthy without even realising because it's like enjoyable, or you can come to like relax. I mean, get rid of stress from your day or whatever. It's always been a kind of smaller pool, smaller club, so there's that kind of nice environment and like family feel to it. Um, everyone enjoys himself and everyone gets along. So yeah, I've always enjoyed swimming here. Yeah, and I think the, the setup of the pool with the spectator areas overlooking it allows the parents to come in and feel part of the club as well. Yeah. Uh, which is a, a, a real positive. Obviously swimming had to stop for a long period of time. We've managed to retain a, a fair amount of our membership and new members have joined since we've reopened. We were relocated temporarily within the pandemic over to the Erskine facility, which we, was good that we were still able to, to swim over there while this facility was closed, but it's always great to get back to your, your, your home club and your home venue. The club started on the 5th of September 1991. I retired in the July and I decided I'll take up swimming as a hobby. Came along here and there was quite a few. So nothing was going on, which so we just used to play about. And we started playing this water polo in the shallow end. So that was good fun. And then the manager said, you know, the numbers were growing because people were hearing about it. He said, I think you should start a club. It's, when the group's here, it's a great atmosphere. They're all full of fun, they, they muck in, everybody helps each other. Um, we just have good fun. They have a good social side. 
They take them to concerts, theatres. They do dances, good dances. And they take the bus runs to different places. We had a trip this year already. We went to Holmond. We all got a two-hour sail on the walk and then into the hotel for a meal and back home. In recognition of the group's work, Effie, Isabel Marshall Centre and Meg triumphed in the inspirational group category at the 2019 Age Scotland Awards. I nominated the three of them because of the work that they've done for the club. As you know, we've got a lot of older members who are 80 plus and this is their community. The over 50s is a good club, socially, friendly and just boosts up the morale and gives you something to look forward to. When you come in in the morning, you might come in with a sour face, but you get me a smile on your face. It really does, it's good. Uh -huh. Well, there's been water polo in this pool since the 1930s. Uh, originally, the club was called Rainfruit Aqua Water Polo Club, uh, which also had a swimming part as well and synchronised swimming also. Um, it, it's been in different guises since then. And we're the latest incarnation of that is Rain 96 Water Polo, part of the Rain 96 swimming team. We compete uh, both the under 14 and under 16 boys uh, in the national leagues. And we're hoping to go down south next year and play in the, the national age groups. Uh, but we've also got a masters team that play the odd tournament and uh, actually enter the West Cup, which is officially the oldest water polo tournament in the world. Most of our uh, juniors also represent Scotland, which has been a great triumph for, for a team that's only been going for five or six years. I think it's really important for both friendships and also fitness training. It's a great close quarters team sport which means that you get really close to the people you train with and the people you play against. So it's great for mind, body and soul. The, the testament to the club, to the sport is, even after the lockdown and all the hardship that everybody's went through, we've all still come back, everybody's back playing, so that shows you the core, core strength of the sport for me. I think the, the ref the bass speak for himself, it's the history of it. It's probably one of the last ones, uh, certainly in Scotland, that the old Victorian style bass that are still playing water polo. Um, so this whole place holds a lot of good memories for this, this particular team and this particular club. The baths are iconic as a building. Um, they give a rare experience as a bath, being that they're still the rude world day instructor. And it's, the experience is largely unchanged to what it would be for people 100 years ago. We've recently invested £180,000 into renovations from the bath. This includes plant renovations, new lighting, and some cosmetic work just to make her look our best for our 100th birthday. The plant renovations are quite significant. We have two new gas boilers with new control systems. These make them more ecologically efficient and mean we can really monitor our carbon footprint, which is obviously important in a world where we're trying our best to limit climate change. When you look at the more cosmetic side, we have completely redecorated the inside of the, the pool hall. It looks really fresh and it has new lighting, which we were hoping give it that Edwardian feel and really speak to Abercrombie's vision for it, what it should be. Abercrombie's interiors are very clean and crisp and we think it gives it that now. And we also have some new lighting on the outside of the buildings, which highlights the absolutely beautiful stonework on the outside. Since the pandemic, we've seen a really significant increase in swimmers coming back to the baths. I think there's been a real focus on people doing things locally and using their local resources and we've seen that come back and I hope that continues for a very long time. I'd like to think it would still be standing in a hundred years a bit, that might be a bit optimistic, but I'd like to think my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren get the experience of swimming at their local pool in the town that they've been brought up in. It was a good base uh, and the facilities here are excellent and a very, very friendly atmosphere. Still a nice, big, bright place to be, and it's worn well, from from what I can tell. If you look at, even if you look at old pictures of it, a lot of the, the fencing and the infrastructure that's here, it's still here from that time, so it's, it, it's lasted well, I don't see any reason why not.
yeah, I'd absolutely love the, the swimming baths of Union 21-21. It's a magnificent facility that, that should be maintained, and I'd like to think in a, in a hundred years' time there'll still be here, people here wanting to swim and look after themselves, and hopefully the swimming club will also be here in 21-21. So long as this pool stands, there'll be a lot of pool played in. So let's hope so. Absolutely. It's an antique, I know, but we love it. It's rent through. I wouldn't like a modern pool. We're so used to this, it's got character. The baths are part of who people are in Renfrew and I think that's a really, really lovely thing. I think it's always a danger that we take our historic buildings for granted um, and it's only when we see them potentially being lost that we suddenly realise what their value is. Uh, I'd suggest that they see the value in them now and make use of them and ensure that they do have a positive future. I feel very proud now of the building to see it still here and still operational and it sort of fulfills the original intention of just being an intergenerational uh, sort of gift. Um, and I, with, with my own life, I, I, can, I can understand the same urge to sort of pay back into the community and the same, same urge to leave sort of lasting legacies that live on long after you're, you're gone.